What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit, this is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash I do work your lady. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode. Alrighty, this story is called, Random Person on Street Accuses Me of Kidnapping Six Kids. So, backstory first. This happened a few years ago when I was 20 and working in youth or kids care. I was doing a social year after school where people can take a look into a job and actually work full-time hours for a year for basically no pay at all. I got $300 a month, but some actually get nothing. Usually, you have someone else help you with a lot of things and you are not the person taking responsibility even though over the year you gain some. Well, I was in a youth center, which is basically a center where young kids and teens can come in to relax after school. But we also offered first contact for mistreatments and such things. The place where I was only had me and my boss working there, so naturally, I had to do way more than other kids working in 300 to 400 employee companies, and also took a lot more responsibility than in hindsight I should have. I know this is a lot of information, but it's necessary information to grasp the whole story. So we already had enough hours to work on weekends and stuff, which was not all mandatory for me, but I still did because weekends were the real fun part of it. So in school breaks, we also offered a morning care for younger kids, ages 6 to 10. Since working from 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. isn't possible all the time and my boss split the time and, and we were planning morning events, so my boss would do them while I would take care of the kids on regular mornings at the time. We also had two younger sweet girls, age 17 and 18, helping us out as a small-time job and both didn't have any licenses or anything for taking care of kids, so me, who got the license at the start of the year, and my boss were always in charge. In the morning, we still had regular openings and I probably worked some 70-hour weeks in those, and then like 25-hour weeks afterwards. I would have a lot of crazy stories, but this one takes the cake by far. So now we are getting to the story at around the last quarter of my year. My boss had some problems with the people renting his house, so he called me the day before and asked if I could set in the morning care for him an extra day, which was no big deal for me. We actually had planned to go to the city with the kids, a 15 minute car drive, and to a museum eating some ice cream from our money, so he told me I could either cancel the event or just do it since he trusted me enough. This was kinda a big thing for me since usually you didn't get that much responsibility and it showed I was trusted enough, plus I also loved this kind of work. So I just went by with the event as usual. The parents were all okay with me telling them that I would do the event, so everything went fine. We drove there with 11 people in total in two cars, me in one and the other two girls in two more cars, and went to the museum. I was really happy with how everything went and we didn't have much go bad or kids misbehaving or anything, just the usual kid stuff. That was until we got to the cafe to eat some ice cream. We were sitting outside, just eating the ice cream, ready to get to the cars afterwards when a lady, entitled lady, approaches us. I did not see her immediately as I was busy paying for the ice cream, but sweet girl later told me she just came up, took a look at our group, and asked one of the younger kids where his parents were, to which the kid responded that they were at work. She then turned to Sweet Girl 1 and demanded to know what they were doing here and why she was alone with all those kids and why they were not in school. Well, Sweet Girl 1 had Sweet Girl 2 sit right on the other end of the table and explain that they were part of a youth care program and that the kids are on summer break. I never asked how the conversation turned out, but when I got to the table, Entitled Lady demanded to speak with the boss of the group, to which I turned to her and asked, Excuse me, lady, uh, I'm responsible for the group. What's the matter? The lady just looks at me and then snaps. There's no way you are responsible here. I'm calling the police right now. Someone this young can't take care of so many children. In a very impolite manner. So now I get this really bad feeling and signal to Sweet Girl to get the kids a bit away and out of hearing range as they could get words from Entitled Lady. I still try to be polite and say, I'm sorry, but I indeed work for this place. Oh, we went to the museum today and are just preparing to get back to the center so that the moms can pick up their children. I would also appreciate if you could watch your manners as there are children nearby. 
Well, I thought that would end the conversation, but no. Entitled Lady gets this ridiculous thought in her head and screeches, not loud, but in a really annoying tone. I don't believe you. With your face, you must be a kid, Didla, and you have kidnapped these children's sweet girls are probably your accomplices. I will call the police. My eyes widen in shock as I realize what she just did. This was a serious accusation, and even though I'm obviously not a kid diddler, even the accusation can destroy people's career in our field. I try again and say, listen, entitled lady, I work at that place and you can call them at any time and I am also an adult. What you are doing is slander and I hope you will leave us alone now. I would say I wasn't as polite as before, but I was not going around any borders either, even using the polite form of you in my language, while she was using the impolite, disrespectful term throughout the whole exchange. She already had her hands on her phone and told me that a police officer can decide that. At this point, various people have stopped and looked, but most thought it wasn't a big deal since none of us really yelled or anything. At this point, I know I should just wait and phone my boss first to tell him about the incident, and then one of the moms to trigger a phone chain to announce that we will be later, but I will drop off their kids at their house if needed to. Well, officer comes up like 10 minutes afterwards and asked what is going on, to which entitled lady now screams in the middle of the street that I and sweet girls one and two should be arrested for kidnapping these six children. By now, a few people are standing by as the officer walks to me and asks what's going on. I tell him where I work and that the lady had been harassing me and the kids for almost 20 minutes now, including calling me a kid diddler and a kidnapper. The officer looks a bit uneasy and asks me if he can call my community's office, as this is a community service, so I am employed by the community, as well as seeing my ID. I comply and a phone call later, it's all settled. The lady just tries to storm off, hearing this mumbling about how the parents are irresponsible for keeping their children in my care. This was time for awesome moms to appear. She apparently was in the city as she got called on the phone chain and decided to come for the rescue and found us just at this moment. She stops the lady in her tracks and scolds her on all the stuff she did as well as telling her all the stuff I did with her kid. Whoa, crazy. Her kid was on every care program we had. This is not a bad thing as we actually do a lot of education and kids love it and we knew each other quite well. The officer seeing this is now slightly amused and asked if there was anything else. I say yes and ask him if there is any ground of me pressing charges against the lady for slander, to which he happily applied with all the bystanders, hearing what the lady said there certainly was. I gladly pressed charges against the woman. In the end, she actually had to pay a fine in the lower thousands, as well as paying me money for the slander. It could have ended way worse for her if I actually had a problem finding a job after my social year and could have resulted in years of prison for her. The kids were a bit mortified at first, but it was certainly a story to tell. Also, all the props to sweet girls for staying calm with the kids the whole time. I ended up giving them 20 euro vouchers for a clothing store for how they acted. I could probably tell a lot of stories on r slash entitled parents or other stuff, but this was by far the most bizarre and disturbing things I ever witnessed. Who just comes up and accuses someone of kidnapping and being a kid diddler with nothing to base it on? But yes, I do, in fact, work here, lady. Uh, yes, you guys want to be careful with uh, throwing around the kid diddler accusations. Obviously, if there's a good amount of evidence <laughs> that they are indeed a kid diddler, you should go ahead and uh, report it for investigation. However, if you're just trying to ruin someone's life, well, that's a good way to do it. <laughs> Plus, it's crappy because you're taking attention away from actual kid diddlers that need the attention so they can, you know, go to jail. So my point is, think of the children, but not too much. I'm watching you. This story's called, Hospital Security Gets Me Fired For Going In Places I'm Allowed To Go. I worked an approximate total of one shift on a part-time weekend overnight laundry position for a big local hospital, but actually had to undergo a whole 40-hour week of hospital procedure training before that. I trained alongside other medical personnel, nurses, orderlies, etc., and was trained on putting out fires, setting up hospital email, and all this junk that no one in laundry does. One part of the training was instruction on places on the hospital property we were allowed to go. 
One perk of working there was that everyone could use the hospital lounge area, which had a workout room with exercise equipment and relaxing areas, located on the second floor of the building where my laundry area was. I hadn't been issued my scan badge thing yet for my first shift because my actual boss works days and I work nights, so there was a disconnect of when to get it. I approached security about scanning open the laundry section as I was a little early and eager to finally get started. I got a kinda side-eye sneer, but he later saw me working in the laundry area, so he knew my story was right. That shift there was a complex series of laundry machine buttons I needed to press, which I scribbled down hastily on some scrap paper. The next day, I show up early again and went to sit in a cafeteria area where the public is allowed. I sit down and remembered that I had the scribbled paper and want to rewrite it so it's clear to remember the buttons to press in which order, and to have the sequence more fresh in memory. Why they don't just have a sign for it is a mystery to me. So I reached for the pen I always carry, and I forgot it that day. I walk out to my truck to find a pen, nothing there either. I walk back in, and the place is deserted because it's about 11pm. So I go into the areas I'm allowed into, such as the lounge exercise and the lobby, looking for a pen to write with that I could borrow, and even make a kind of writing gesture in case they see me looking around on cameras. I didn't find one after maybe a few minutes of looking, so I gave up. Shift starts at about 20 minutes in, same security guy from the day before comes in, flanked by another guy as backup, and asked to speak with me privately. He asks what I was doing snooping around, and I said I was not snooping, just looking for a pen, but I guess he doesn't believe me and tells me I'm not allowed in those areas, despite being trained that I was allowed there. He says he needs to take my badge now, which I did have on me, and needed to escort me to my car. He makes me walk in front of them way out to my truck again, and as I'm unlocking the door, the two security guards both unsnap their holsters. Unbelievable. I was looking for a freaking pen. A few days later, since the job was only two days a week weekends, I get a call from the employment agency that the hospital has decided to not continue the account, which means I'm fired from it. All because of a security guard on a power trip who couldn't be bothered to double check as to whether I was actually allowed up there. I spent a 40 hour week of hospital routine training that doctors get in order to work a single six ish hour shift and then get unsnapped on when I look around for a pen to copy some notes on. Perhaps I dodged a bullet, in more ways than one, for not having to deal with that security chump anymore. Okay, I don't know how employment agencies work, but I'm pretty sure that is wrongful termination. So you can, with a clear conscience, sue a building that is taking care of sick people. And if I'm wrong, fire away in the comments, call me stupid, I don't care. Alrighty Roo, this story's called, You're Not the Boss's Kid. I don't really know if it belongs here, but my parents have a business, and when I was around 12 to 13, I used to help out a lot in there. It was usually after school when I came, but whenever I walked in there and there were some new workers, they never really questioned it. So one day after school, I went inside and pressed the bell and saw a man probably like 35 years old or something. I'm not sure since it was a bit blurry what he looked like, and he looked confused. So I look him in the eyes and he just stands in front of the door and looks at me and then closes the door, leaving me outside. Great. So I ring the bell again and I just hear what was probably his voice since I didn't know that voice, don't open the door. And I hear my aunt who also works there just say, why? And he went, there's some idiotic girl probably begging for money. Remember that the wall is pretty thin. So I ring the bells the third time and my aunt pops out and lets me in. I greet her and give her a kiss and go straight for my parents' office. Exactly in front of their office, that guy was there again. He told me I couldn't go in because you can't go inside, they have a meeting. There was a window and my father sat in front of my mom because he probably needed help with some documents or something. My mom's pretty much the brain of the two, so I said, I don't really think they're having a meeting because those are both my parents. No, they aren't. I've seen their kids a lot of times since I've worked here since a long time. I didn't really remember how long he said, but it sure as heck wasn't believable. At this point, 12-year-old me didn't care anymore and I just went right in. I came in, my parents looked at me, tried to greet me, and then that worker just grabbed my arm and told them, I'm really sorry, this kid just tried to steal from multiple workers already, I'll throw her out. My mom then told him to stop, which he already did, and told him, 
Don't you dare lie about my daughter stealing and then throw her out. He was shocked, looked at me. I already had my school ID in hand and had that baseball pitcher I was right smile. He stared at me in disbelief and stormed right out. My parents fired him. They afterwards bought some cake for the workers because he already stole some bags of rice, but they had no proof. Edit, a lot of you got confused about why he said I was stealing. I think he probably already stole stuff from the others. The only things I know about is the rice and a calculator because my parents didn't tell me when I was younger what was happening. So, um, when I was a little kid, my dad used to own businesses pretty much the entire time I was a kid. In case any of y'all haven't experienced this, but when you're a kid and your parents own businesses, it feels pretty baller to just be able to walk around and do whatever the hell you want, whenever you want, at this place where normally you wouldn't be able to do anything. However, I don't think I've ever had to deal with an employee not knowing who I actually it might have actually happened a lot of times to the point where I don't really think it's anything of note in my mind, so I can't recall it. But one thing I can tell you is that I guarantee you OP here felt like the most bad of baseball pitchers because that right there is exclusivity. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.